can't be afraid to lose what you got to gain what you deserve. I knew there was something bigger in store. You know, a lot of us become so complacent on what we got and we're afraid to let that go to get bigger and better things. Because I really believe through hard work, faith, dedication, anything is possible. So me and my sister moved into a gated community. We found out real fast we were living in the hood. Another song where I'm simply spreading the message. Every day I'm improving and every day I'm progressing. I'm glad I didn't start this with hopes of being accepted. I just did my own thing and hope that I could I think we should all try to speak our dreams into existence. That's about 50 of it, the other 50. I came out here, um, of course, to chase my dream as DJing, but I didn't know anybody. I didn't have no contacts, no promoters, nothing at all. I just had my friend Kesey that lived out here and we stood with her, but I had no contact. I had to fucking get it in my head. <laughs> right now, you hear the fucking birds and shit. Like, you Very see sugar. trees, I don't know. I guess like the hoods is just a little different out here in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. And I know like it get way worse than this, but like when you tell people like, yeah, I live in Stone Mountain Central Drive, they be like, in the oh, you live in the trap. And I'm like, shit, I didn't even know, dog. She uh, got shot at yeah, out here. Yeah, 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 that shit was crazy. So I was, um, we, you, we was going to where you was DJing at. Mm -hmm. We was going, we had, we had parked up over there and then we was like, oh, we got to the spot and the shorty forgot her ID. So we came back, she left her ID in the car. We come back, it was like her car, or another car that we parked right here. She gets out, goes to her car, I start hearing her screaming. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So I hop out, some little young boys running off with her purse. And I'm like, start chasing them. Like, yo, what the fuck? Give her a fucking purse. They was in her car, ran her car, got her purse. I start chasing, they turn around, boom, boom, boom. They ain't hit me because they was running, but they, that shit was crazy. And that shit happened right there. Like, yeah. So one day I come home from a gig and the whole row house right across from ours was on fire. Like how it looked over two or three years ago. Y'all just put a gate up. That's the only new thing. That's the only thing that looked different. Y'all put a motherfucking so, gate up. I told my sister like, hey, we got to move up out of here. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I go out of town, I always take an extra speaker with me because people be saying they got good uh, setup and they set up be horrible. So this is for tomorrow. I'm going to um to DJ at the CIAA in Charlotte. So. Well, I'm from a small city in Pennsylvania called York. Um, I also lived in Harrisburg for a couple years. And when I was like 12, I started break dancing. Like my cousins came down from Boston and they all were break dancers. And when they came down, they put me on. So while I was watching break dance videos, I kept looking at the DJ like, man, fuck this dancing stuff. I want to start DJing. And at like the age of 12, I asked my dad for turntables, but he never bought them for me. I don't know if they were too expensive or he really just didn't take me seriously. But when I got to the age of 21, I bought my first set of turntables. I've been wanting them since 12 years old. I could only afford my first set on my 21st birthday. 
that was a gift to myself. And from there, it's history. Nightclub, so I ordered like 50 masks. I ordered hella shit. I always do the most. Like, yeah, that might be doing the most, but we really be having over like 300 women in there. So like, what you gonna do for these beads? Type shit. <laughs> So after being in Atlanta for four years, me and Balls Brit are the top lesbian promoters out here on the scene. So I'm her partner first and foremost, but outside of being her partner, I'm also a host and I've been promoting since I was about 15, so almost over 10 years doing it. Um, we just kind of, we, we vibe off one another, man. It's like, she like the creative one and I'm like the paperwork one, like I'll do like contracts and read over like the technical stuff and she like the creative one. And um, in general, you know, I'm, like I said, the host, so I'm on the mic, she's a DJ, so she's DJing, that's kind of how we vibe one another. Yeah, and people already pay for that. You know what I mean? So right. now I'm like, oh God. All right, well, they gonna have to figure it out. Yo, I got so much shit in here, like, look at this Mardi Gras stuff. I got, we try to do a big. So like we got assistants, you know, um, that help us, you know, prepare for the night and decorate and shit. And we sell package deals for like birthdays. So we get you balloons, cakes, all that. And my damn assistant did not get the balloons. So it's like people already paid for that. So now I'm trying to figure out how we can get them. Hello? They're all closed. They're closed? Damn. Yeah. Yo, so right now, um, me and my partner, Ball Spurt, we do a big all-girl party every first Friday, every month. And like, no lie, it's the biggest all-girl party in Atlanta every month. Yeah, so first Fridays, we started that, man, it's 2019, so that was in um, 2017, the end, like November, I believe. Um, so like, at one point, in like that March, we had like a Mardi Gras party, it was, it was like nobody there and we were like, what the fuck? We really slacked on a promo, like, I remember that. Like, I was like, we didn't promote it as hard as we should have. We kept, we just got comfortable with it. Can't get comfortable at all. So we were like, you know, fuck it. We gonna have to keep doing it. We don't want to lose this dope club. You know what I mean? The owners coming at us like, what's going on? Like, so we like, shit, like we gotta make sure we really do good the next month or you might lose the whole night in, in general. So we went back to the drawing board. We were just reposting the flyer, you know. We didn't really reach out to people. We weren't asking anybody to celebrate their birthdays or anything. And remind you, this is a really big club downtown Atlanta. Yo, we can't do this again. Like, what can we do better? The next day I woke up to a call from the owner and he said, Excel, you might have to have some other people join on this promotion team because we can't do under $1,000 at a bar downtown Atlanta ever again. Came back harder and we started picking back up and now the whole club is packed, like hit capacity at 130 type thing. And it's, it's just crazy to see it grow like that. You know what I mean? It's like 
where these people coming from? Like, it's just crazy that all these people know to come here. Like, that's that's one thing about parties, like, getting people to come somewhere. Like, that's something. Like, that's not easy to do. Like, I've been doing parties for years. Like, getting people to come to a, a place, bro, that's not easy. Like, last year, we had 40 people max at our party. And this year, we hit capacity at 1 a.m. So that just proved to us, like, Yo, with that consistency, hard work, and doing that reevaluation to keep things moving was key. I'm Lala Shepard, the founder and host on The Progress Report. It's a podcast, you know, where we speak to entrepreneurs, artists, and uh, entertainers. I called Lala Shepard and I said, hey, I'm new, you know, I, I'm new to Atlanta, and I just wanna, you know, work with people. And she said, yeah, well, come up, be a guest DJ on my show. The first time I went, she was interviewing OJ the Juice Man. Hey, what it do? This your boy OJ the Juice Man. And right now, you tune in to the Progress Report. You don't know, from my hood, I'm like, so OJ is just like your guest? Like, it's just regular to have like names like this? This is my first time meeting her, first time DJing this show, and like, I, my mind was blown. And I kept trying to keep in contact with her, like, hey, let me be your DJ for your show. We kept building and our friendship started building. So Lala would invite me out to a lot of like industry events. Every time would introduce me like, hey, this is DJ Excel. And I just grew so much respect for her because she wasn't even looking for nothing for real. Like she, you could just tell like everything she was doing was sincere, putting me on. Excel, who is new to the city. So I've been in Atlanta a little over four years now, and I've grown so much within these four years. Right now, my name is buzzing a lot. Me and Boss Britt, we're growing. We're doing yacht parties. We're doing mansion pool parties. Um, just building our brand, working hard, trying to think of new ways to brand ourselves every day. Right now I'm working on dropping a line called Exclusive Lifestyle and it's very, very important to me because if you want to live an exclusive lifestyle, I learned you got to do extraordinary things. You know, we all want to be great and have nice cars, have nice clothes, have stability, but we want to do the basics just to get us by. And I've recently learned like, we gotta start pushing ourselves to the limit. I think moving to Atlanta gave us a fresh start and I really believe in the law of attraction and you attract the people that you want yeah. around you, you know? So when you put out the energy of like, yo, I'm grinding, I'm trying to do this, I started attracting those same type of people and I think you did too. So now I'm currently with a woman that I feel like changed my whole outlook on life. Um, man, she gave me motivation when like, I ain't have no hope. Three months to us being together, I was broke. I'm not gonna lie, like I was DJing full time and I was going check by check, you know what I mean? And I'm trying to impress this girl because you know, she got her own thing. She got, she got her money. So like, I'm grown. Don't nobody wanna be with somebody broke. You know what I mean? But I remember I got booked for this out of town gig. It was either like in Cali or Miami. And um, on a late night, like, I started venting to her. And I ain't gonna lie, like, my eyes teared up because I'm a sensitive ass cancer. And I'm just telling her, like, man, I got booked. I don't even have no clothes to wear to this place. She said these words to me, and I swear to God, like, man, it just, it gave me so much hope, like, and, and just how serious she was and, sinc and sincere she was, it gave me so much hope. She just looked at me in my eyes and was like, you don't see what I see in you. And like, you going through it right now, but you know, your time is going to come. And when you down and out and you're broke, you feel like that's it. You feel like that's what it's going to be like forever. So I'm just like, you know, just thank God she don't look at me like, damn, I'm a broke girl. Well, at least I didn't feel that way, you know what I mean? And then, um, then you know, we went to sleep, whatever, and I woke up to a cash app. And she cashed at me like $300 to just go shopping. And I'm like, yo, this is a real one. In my head, like I really need this money, but I don't want her to give it to me because we, we're, we were fairly new in the relationship. So 
I told her like, yo, I appreciate this and I'm gonna send you half back. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. I need I need at least 150 because I don't got shit. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna send you half back. And let me tell you, when you broke, you can make a lot shape for 150. Like I got me some vans that was like $50 and probably hit up at H&M or Forever 21 and and got some stuff. So look like a little gesture like that went a long way for me. Like somebody that really believed in me got my back. The crazy thing is to come full circle. This year, I got booked for the same event, and I bought her a flight ticket. So it's just crazy, you know, when you have somebody in your life that truly supports you, you know, through the, the hard times, you better make sure you bless them when you finally got, you know, that little come up, so. Well, you already know it's your girl, DJ Excel. I'm rocking with Tracks Girls tonight. We about to turn up at Tongue Groove in Atlanta. It's on the track. If I told you I was losing in our life, if I want it, I'ma take it like it's mine Tell them, put it all in the pay. Don't nobody get a pass I just wanna see the cash ah. If I told you I was losing in our life If I want it, I'ma take it like it's mine Tell them, put it all in the pay. Don't nobody get a pass I just wanna see the cash ah. Always on go Came up for when they flipped them stones Had to learn the game on my own Anybody who's watching this, I just want to help motivate you guys and let you guys know no matter where you came from, no matter who you know, whatever you want in life, you can have it if you truly believe in yourself. Don't let nothing stand in the way. Don't let nobody knock you down. One of the biggest things that took me to where I am was believing in myself. And not necessarily knowing how I was going to get there, but just believe somehow I would get there. And through the hard work, the consistency, things just started falling in place. So anybody chasing a dream, any entrepreneur, anybody that just has a bigger vision, you know, believe in yourself and take those steps to reach your goal. It's not going to be overnight, but that consistency will get you there. So my brand is going to keep growing. I'm going to keep growing. Me and Boss Brick going to keep growing. The progress report is taking off. So there's a lot of things in store. I just want y'all to stay tuned. Hopefully she get married. You know, she should get married. I'm being a wedding. Flower girl. Am <laughs> 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 I allowed to speak of that? <laughs> okay, then, bitch. Like, gang, y'all. Right. 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 Hey, man, wait. Wait till I get some uh, jewelry. I'm going to be like, hey. Right. Yeah. You talk, game crazy. You came at me crazy. Yo, you want to fight? I don't, yeah. It's your girl, DJ Excel. It's your girl. Why you at it? You don't like me. Mm-mm. It was super ghetto. One time, I went to go pay rent, and the office was closed for two weeks. Swear to God. Yo, this nigga. I swear to God. Yeah. Pull up real quick. Know they gon' feel this. This is who you gotta do.